and we're here to help you with calculus, chemistry, physics, whatever you need. Just give us a call, 61811, or email us at tutorvision at gdcn.gottech.edu, and we'd be glad to help you. So let's get started, shall we? Do it, Holly. All righty. Let's start out with a um, trivia question, shall we? Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Need a good trivia question for you guys. All right. Oh, yeah, we give away free t-shirts. They're really cool. They look like this. Say Tutor Vision. Everybody has one. Why don't you? All right. Um... Hmm. I've totally asked like all these questions. I need a new book. Let me tell you. I have. There's like black fingerprints all over it from the whiteboard markers. It's kind of gross. All right. All right. Come on, guys. Humor me and call in. Okay. Um. Here we go. Where's the I need a good marker? Here we go. All right. Let's get this going then, shall we? Let's scooch this back a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um did that one yesterday. Okay. Hmm. I really need a new book. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, from 1980 to 1990, the U.S. Oops, hold on. The U.S. Um, had the highest percent increase in which group? Is it five to nine year olds? Is it 55 to 59 year olds? Or is it 95 to 99 year olds? Okay. 1980, 1990, US had the highest percent increase in which group? Five to nine year olds, 55 to 59 year olds, or 95 to 99 year olds? I don't see why it would be 95 to 99 year olds. But, you know, you never know. All right. Let's get this started. All right. Should do what you want to do. Um, I guess we could do, let's do physics. Why not? I think you guys are doing conservation of energy. Um, looks like the book is open to the spring energy, which is just fine. We can look at that. Um, okay. So let's take a look at that. Spring energy. Now, wouldn't it be a great idea? Because springs store a lot of energy, right? They store, um, if you compress a spring, you can store a lot of energy in it. And 
And springs pretty much just oscillate back and forth. Of course, they, I mean, technically speaking, they would oscillate back and forth forever, but, you know, they don't. Um, wouldn't it be great if we could store energy in a spring? We would solve the world's energy problems, I think. I think it's safe to say. All right, so um, we can talk about spring in terms of forces and in terms of uh, energy. So first, let's talk about it in the term of a force. There's something called um, Hooke's Law, which tells us the um, restoring force of a spring. Okay. Hold on. Are these okay? Yeah, they're okay. Physics. Okay, so first we have so we have this spring, and let's say it's at equilibrium, and we're holding it. We have this mass m, and it's at equilibrium. Or the spring is not stretched. Let's just say. And then we let the mass go, and the spring falls a distance L. What is this distance L? Well, we can determine the, f we know the force of the mass acting on the spring. We know that. Now, if, we, if this was just a rope, and we were to draw a free body diagram on this, it would look like this. We'd have mg, and we would have the tension of the rope. But it's not a rope. It's a spring. So we're going to have this. We're going to have mg, and we're going to have f sub s, which is going to be negative k delta x. And this k is a spring constant. The opposite of a fall constant. Get it? Because the mass falls. It's funny, right? Fall is in a season, like a summer, fall, spring, I don't know. Okay, so, um, okay. Okay, so let's say we have this mass and we want to figure out <coughs> the spring constant if the uh, spring falls a distance of L before stopping. So, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to have, in this, we're going to have Fs equals mg. So, k delta x equals mg. Now, x can just be our um, length L, so k is going to be equal to mg over L. So, k, or... I guess I could also say it like this. My length as a function of, like this is just saying, say we don't know my, <coughs> my spring constant. We wanted to solve for it in terms of my mass and L. We could, if we do know the spring constant, we could just say L is equal to mg over k. So obviously a heavier, a heavier um, mass is going to make the spring stretch out more. And um, K, I always forget what units that's in. K is 50 newtons per meter. K, not 50, but it's in newtons per meter. So this is force per distance. Okay, so there we go. All right, there you go. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that gives us a certain um, potential energy, and I'll show you because, okay, <clears throat> oops, Okay, uh, spring potential energy.
Okay. All right, so say let's, let's say we have this spring, and it is attached to a wall, and then it's attached to this mass M. Now, um, let's say we compress it. Oopsies. And this is its equilibrium position. Right, let's write that out. Okay. And let's say we compress the spring to right here. And this is its compressed position. Okay? Now, what kind of energy do we get from that? Because I know that if we, if we let it go, it's going to push the, the block a certain distance. Now, um, what kind of energy is stored in when we compress it? So my energy, my potential energy from the spring is going to be 1 half kx squared. And this right here is my um, compressed distance. Okay? There we go. And... So there you go. Um, there's a pretty cool problem. And then, as you can see, this can be transferred to our velocity. Because um, initially, we would have no, uh, uh, no kinetic energy from the block. But we do have potential energy from the spring. And then finally, we're going to have, once we let it go, and it goes back to its equilibrium position, we're going to have, um, we're going to have a, uh, kinetic energy from the mass, but no potential energy from the spring. Okay? All right. Um, let's do a problem, shall we? Okay. Okay. That's my other... We had, like, five erasers the other day. I don't know where they all went. I don't like these as much. Okay. Here, let me zoom out. Okay, guys, what do you think? From 1980 to 1990, the U.S. had the highest percent increase in which group? Five to nine-year-olds, five to 55 to 59-year-olds, or 95 to 99? Well, let's see. Um, I'm going to have to guess five to nine-year-olds because that's about where we are, me and you. We were born from around 1980 to 1990. Um, and we are what they like to call the um, echo effect. Now, if you remember back in like uh, mid-1940s, during the end of World War II, the population curve, so we have something like this. Um, okay. The population curve looked something like this. It was like, um, it was like this, and then all of a sudden there was a big dip in the male population at a certain age. And then it went back up and it was like this. Okay? So this is like the, um, this is 1940 something. And that's because, you know, so many men were at war, yada, yada, yada. Okay, now, once they got back from war, there was something called the baby boom. And I'm sure a lot of your parents, and my mom was, um, there was a huge baby boom. As soon as all of the men got back from war, all of the women were like, okay, let's make babies. Because they were gone for so long. That's what my grandmother did. So, our parents were born, and there was this huge, like here is the baby boomers. So this is around 19... 
1940 to 1950, something like that. I guess I should say 1945, around that. So there's all these new babies running around. So what happens is, as the years go on, um, they become hippies, you know. So in 1970 or so, there's something like this. There's a big lump around the 20-year-olds. And then what happens is these baby boomers, there's so many of them, what happens is there's this big lump around the 20 to 30-year-olds. Okay? Now what's going to happen is they're going to have babies because that's about the age that all those baby boomers have babies. So this is the echo. This is our generation. Okay? Does that make sense? So here's our parents. Here's, here's, our, here's us. So my mom was born in like 1950. So she was kind of a baby boomer. So she had me. She's like 30-something. And that's where we are today. Let me make sure that's right. That's just my guess, though. Okay. Um, 10, 17. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's 95 to 99 year olds. How about that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. Um, they increased 96%. Wow. Five to nine year olds, just 9.8%. Wow. 55. Okay. Wow. The 95 to 99 year olds imp increased by 96%. So, all those old people, you know what it must be? It must be they're uh, starting to live longer and all that stuff. So, awesome. Okay, let's put another trivia question up there. For those of you just joining me, I'm Holly. Oops. Ew. Okay, let's find another one, fellas, guys and gals. Okay. Um. So tired. No. Mm. I can never pick a good one because you guys have done all these for you. Mm. Um, okay. All right. Okay, here we go. The United States has only had one vice president Vice President who was born in California. Who was it? Okay. If you know the answer, give me a call. Alrighty. Cool. All right, let's do um, one of the problems in the book. There's a, I'm looking at page 284, example 10.6. We have a spring launched plastic ball, and um, we have a toy gun, and um, we have a, because really that's all the, you know, it, all those little spring launched plastic balls. It's not like they have gunpowder in there or anything. But, um, yeah, those little plastic balls are, have little springs. 
So here's what it looks like. Page 285, no, 24, 26. <laughs> so we have this little gun. I apologize for my... And here's the spring. Oh, hold on. Here's the spring, and there's the ball. And then what happens is It lets go, and the ball ball flies out at a certain velocity. And they want to know what is the ball's speed as it leaves the barrel. So it's compressed 10 centimeters. And uh, so we want to know our velocity. And the mass of the ball is 10 grams. And my spring constant is 10 newtons per meter. OK. So in all these problems, whether it has a spring, whether something's falling from a building, or whether it's um, whether there's friction, or whether there's not, whatever you do, you always got to start with this equation. Now, as you get better at these problems, it'll take you less time to do, but always start with this. Initial energy equals final energy, okay? So um, what I always used to do, uh, you don't always have to do this. I always did this initially. Kinetic energy initially plus potential energy from spring initially. Now, if you have gravity in there, you would put a gravity term, potential energy, but you know you, know you don't, so don't worry about it. So equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy from the spring final. We know we do not have any initial kinetic energy. We know we do not have any uh, final spring potential energy. So my initial uh, spring potential energy is 1 half kx squared equals 1 half mv squared. Now, remember in these equations we used to do the ones with something dropping from a building or something like that where mass was involved, and mass usually canceled out. Well, here, mass does not cancel out because mass, as if you remember, you can probably figure out that if you have like a ping pong ball at the end of a spring, it's going to go a lot faster than if you had like a bowling ball at the end of a spring. So my velocity is going to be kx squared over m, all that to the one half. So that's going to be um, 10 newtons per meter times. Um, 10 centimeters of so 0.10 meters squared over the mass, which is 10 kilograms. So it's 0 0.01 kilograms. All that to the one half power. And that's going to give me 100. Uh, oh, whoops. Just one? No, ten. Okay, ten meters per second. So does that make sense? Awesome. It's really easy, guys. Just gotta practice. I remember when I took physics, I practiced and practiced and practiced. Until you get it right. It eventually makes sense, I promise. Don't worry. Um, Oh, here's a good one. Okay, this one's involving friction. Hey, okay. We'll do this one. All right. So you guys excited for spring break? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Just want to chill out and do nothing. I'm so tired.
But it's Tuesday, so we're almost halfway through. Did everybody have a nice pie day? Yeah, happy pie day. Pie day was yesterday. 3.14, March 14th. Um, it's a month after Valentine's Day, so maybe that's like the special Valentine's Day for guys. I don't know. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to March 14th, 2015. So that's going to be 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Hey, isn't that awesome? Or if you want, you can do the next year and round up because it's really 3.14159. I think it's, what is it, 3.141592. So, do you think, I'm wondering if on March 14th, 1592, did they have some big party or something? Because I definitely would have. Because that's like, that's the pie day. That's the pie day of all pie days. I mean, we won't get another Pi Day of all Pi Days until 15,927. And none of us will live that long. So, yeah. Happy Pi Day.